Hello and welcome to another Hot Rods to Review. In this video, I'll be finishing my blind review of the manga series My Hero Academia Vigilantes by reviewing the final arc known as the Naruhata Lockdown. It was 32 chapters long, which I believe is the longest arc of this series, and like I predicted in my last review, it ended with a banger. We should celebrate together by banging that sweet subscribe button. That came off a little more sexual than intended, but by hitting it, you may get more Vigilantes content in your subscription feed. For example, I may make a video that compares Koichi to Deku as protagonists, so stay tuned. With that being said, let's get into the review. This arc had a lot of highs and a lot of lows, but all around it was just so good. It picked up right where the final performance arc left off, with Koichi watching over Kazuho while she recovered from the Queen Bee takeover. He was doing his best to look over her because the police wouldn't do their job until the detective guy, whose name I can't remember, did. I personally found it quite silly that he made the crawler a villain when literally all he does is help people. Also, I remember in the final performance arc, it was revealed that you don't typically get a villain designation after first defense. I know that Koichi has been using his quirk illegally a lot, but no one has ever tried to bring him in, so I wouldn't even say those counted. Actually, there were times when pro heroes allowed the crawler to help them out when dealing with villains, and not to mention the fact that the police and the detective guy actually covered up his involvement in the Sky Egg incident, despite him being a vigilante that used his quirk illegally multiple times in the past. So yeah, I personally didn't think it made much sense for him to be designated as a villain since he's never been reprimanded for his actions before. However, I really did like that there were finally consequences for him not concealing his identity. I mean, his costume literally has a mask on it that he refused to wear for some reason. The only person he actually tried to hide his identity from was Makoto Senpai, but he was pretty much open about it to everyone else. When I was reading previous arcs, I was always confused as to why he didn't conceal his identity because he was literally breaking the law. And I was even more confused as to why the authorities never did anything about him. So I'm just very happy that this got addressed in this arc. Watching Koichi go up against all of those pro heroes was definitely one of the coolest parts of this arc. It highlighted how strong he had become as a vigilante because he was dodging and evading some of the top heroes in Japan. Best Genus and Edshot were both in the top 10 hero rankings in the main series, so what Koichi did here was very impressive. It's possible that they weren't in the top 10 yet, but we are so close to the main series timeline that even if they aren't in the top 10, they were definitely still some of the best heroes in the country. So like I said earlier, Koichi evading those guys was no small feat. I also thought it was so awesome when he was able to evade Ingenium, who was known as the Turbo Hero. He is known for his high speed, yet he was no match for the Crawler in his home court. It really got interesting when Eraserhead came into the picture because like Koichi, he was familiar with Naruhata. Not to mention his quirk nullification abilities would force Koichi to face him in equal footing. But once again, the Crawler was able to demonstrate his excellence with his ability to quickly react to his quirk being nullified and maneuver between quirk travel and regular travel. Even Eraserhead acknowledged that nullifying his quirk had no effect in slowing the Crawler down. But aside from the chase, I also loved the interactions that happened between him and all of the pro heroes. They all knew that he really wasn't a villain Villain, but they just went after him because they wanted to keep him safe. They believed that he bit off more than he could chew with this one, so they needed to capture him for his safety. But moving away from all of that, the villain of this arc, number 6, was even more scary and came off crazier than he appeared in the last arc. He was constantly talking to a fake O'Clock, which made it seem like he was insane, but then it turned out to be all for one, which made a lot of sense. I'm guessing he must have had some quirk that allowed him to communicate with others telepathically, which is why no one else could see him except for number six. I know he is evil, but I think it was actually kind of sweet that he pretended to be number six's favorite hero because it demonstrated that he was taking time to care about him. It's also kind of manipulative when you think about it because he could use his hero status to convince him to do evil things. But back to the point, I really like that All For One showed up and became part of this closing arc, especially since we all knew that he was the person who was really behind all of this. One thing that I definitely did not expect was all of the transformations that Number 6 went through in this arc. They all did make sense since he does have an artificial body that probably had many quirks, but at some point I did find it to be a bit ridiculous. And not to mention the lack of color made me think that he was covered in fire when he was really covered in lightning. I guess that's just a problem with manga in general since they rarely ever get colored, but regardless, it just didn't feel as cool as I know it could have been. Maybe we'll get an anime adaptation that will do these transformations justice? One can hope, right? I mean, who am I kidding? We probably won't get one until after the main series finishes its anime adaptation. But like I said before, 
six getting those transformations made sense because if you're going to create an artificial body you'd want to make one that's completely compatible with the overclock quirk and six's body was so compatible that he was able to make better use of it than o'clock himself as he overcame the physical limitations and was able to use it indefinitely six doing this also foreshadowed the creation of the nomus as they have all had their bodies altered to be a better fit for their quirks as well I predicted a couple of reviews ago that number 6 was a perfect matchup for the crawler due to both of their quirks enhancing their mobility and speed. However, what I didn't predict was that Koichi would unlock Ultra Instinct. Let's talk about that for a second because I just think that was so cool. From what I understood, Koichi's reflexes and subconscious movements were even faster than 6's brand enhanced by Overclock, and that allowed him to evade all of those life-threatening attacks. I like how this was foreshadowed in the part where Koichi was running from the pro heroes. He was even able to get away from Eraserhead because his reflexes allowed him to quickly switch between quirk and non-quirk mobility. So it wasn't that he had an amazing quirk, it was more like he honed his reflexes over the last three years of vigilanteism. He had adapted to various villain quirks, so he was even able to adapt to this overpowered quirk to a certain extent. I really loved All For One's ocean metaphor with Six being able to hold his breath indefinitely and withstand the pressure of being at the bottom of the ocean. However, the crawler had always lived in those depths because no matter how fast he can think, he cannot overcome someone who doesn't need to think to move. It was just so cool and it was definitely my favorite part of this arc. I feel like some of Koichi's power-ups didn't make as much sense to me, like his ability to temporarily fix his arm and his knuckle style at the end. Maybe I just needed to pay closer attention to those parts, but it just felt like he needed to do something that he hadn't done before until he was able to do it. That's not how he got any of his power-ups before, so it just felt like a super convenient thing to happen in order to keep him from dying. But that aside, I liked seeing Koichi and Six as children playing with their All Might and O'Clock toys respectively. It symbolized that Koichi got all the love and attention for his admiration of the number one hero and it represented Six's jealousy of him. He wanted people to admire him and O'Clock as much as they admired Koichi and All Might, which may be why he tried to become the hero O'Clock II and get Knuckle Duster's approval. It conveyed that Koichi embodied the spirit of All Might by always looking out for the little guy. Despite all of his popularity, he still didn't look down on Six. Instead, he offered a hand and played with him even when no one else would. I'm not sure if this was something that actually happened in the past that maybe Koichi just forgot about, but I assume it was just a visual representation of the spirit of this battle. I also really like the spirits of Knuckle Duster and Pop Step aiding the crawler when he was in a really bad situation. I don't know how it happened, but it was cool seeing the gang back together again for their last mission ever. It was very reminiscent of the beginning of the series when they all actually took down criminals together. Knuckle Duster was able to guide the crawler and teach him like he used to while Pop Step provided the emotional support and encouragement that he needed to finish the job. However, as much as I liked this, I don't like how little it was actually explained. I get the implication that they were both on the verge of death so their spirit were leaving their bodies, but I don't understand how communicating with those spirits is even possible. I also felt like this reunion was kind of ruined because both Knuckle Duster and Pop Step survived their near-death experiences. It would have hit so much harder if they were actually about to die and they chose to spend their last moments with Koichi, but it is what it is. It's not like I actually wanted them to die anyway, but it just felt this moment got a little undercut by them both surviving. The ending of this fight was both good and predictable. I knew that with all of the noise Six was making, it was only a matter of time before All Might and the pros got involved in this mess. It's funny because All Might was really a symbol of hope to me, the reader, because before he came, I was very concerned for Koichi. I didn't know if he even could stand up to Six after all of his various transformations, but when All Might showed up, I knew that everything would be alright. It was just like seeing him on the scene put all of my worries to rest, because he's here. Six finally kicked the bucket and left Koichi with a scar. I'm not entirely sure what the purpose of the scar was though. We see at the end that he was living with it and nothing really changed about his personality, but I guess it represents the person that he couldn't save. But it honestly didn't seem to phase him that much. Alright, let's talk about the ending because I have mixed thoughts about it. I don't like how things between Koichi and Kazuho remains unresolved. She apologized to him and everything, but their romance was a huge part of the final performance arc, and it felt like there just wasn't any closure on that plot thread. I thought it would all be resolved in the final chapter, but things were left very open-ended. It's not clear if he chose to be with Makoto or Kazuo. We know that he's in America because he's a fugitive in Japan, so does that mean he ends up with Makoto by default? Kazuo could move to the US if she wanted to be with Koichi, right? Again, I don't like how this had no clear resolution, especially since romance was somewhat what started this whole mess. It just didn't feel like a proper ending. On the other hand, I really liked seeing Koichi become a hero sidekick in the United States. He changed his name to Skycrawler and he seemed to be a really powerful hero. 
it made a lot of sense that he would become Captain Celebrity's sidekick. I even somewhat said in my Sky Egg arc review that it felt like Koichi was a sidekick of Captain Celebrity's hero organization. While I didn't like that at the time, I am much more open to the idea now because his vigilante days are done. I didn't like that the series was about vigilanteism and Koichi was moving to more official hero stuff, but now that the series is over, I don't mind as much. It also made a lot of sense for him to be in the US because it wouldn't have made any sense for him to not have appeared in the main series by now if he was in Japan. If you read the manga, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. Overall, I really like this arc and this entire manga. It had its ups and downs, but I still had a very enjoyable experience reading this. I don't know how I feel about the last panel with Knuckle Duster coming in to save the helpless person getting beaten up by some thugs. It said a new era, which implied that Knuckle Duster was going to make this victim into a vigilante like he did with Koichi, and I'm not sure if that was a good thing. On the plus side, Koichi finally got to fulfill his dream of helping people as a vigilante, but on the downside, he got caught up in a lot of crazy stuff. Kazuo lost an eye and Koichi is a fugitive in his birth country, and that may have never happened if Knuckle Duster never got them involved in his mess. I also thought that he was going to retire to be a family man, but I guess he's not doing that anymore. I'm just saying that it's kind of dark when you think about it. He baits people into breaking the law and then he walks away without consequence. Also, the last page ended with the words, the story continues in My Hero Academia, and as much as I want to believe that we'll see the Crawler, Pop Step, and Knuckle Duster return in the main series, I don't think that's actually going to happen. I'm pretty sure that they just meant that this was the prequel and the story involving All Might and the No Moves will continue in the main series. It's been a pleasure to read this and I hope it gets animated someday because it deserves it. I guess I'll just have to wait and see if or when they will decide to do that. I'm keeping my fingers crossed though. If you liked this video, consider watching another one. I talk about a variety of different topics on this channel, mostly my hero right now, so I hope to see you there. This has been the Hot Rodster. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.